the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. We really don't have any idea if other families are taking the same precautions we are, which, which does make us a little bit nervous. Tonight, a reminder that following COVID safety guidelines is not just about protecting yourself and your family, and you never know who may be vulnerable in your community. Good evening to you at 11 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino, a Midwest woman with a rare disease, tells WRTV's Cornelius Hawker. She's sending her kids back to school, hoping they don't bring the virus home. Erin Anderson and her family haven't been taking any chances during this pandemic. Taking a lot of precautions, we're getting groceries delivered, we're not um, socializing with many families. They're doing this in big part because... I do have autoimmune hepatitis, I'm also pregnant with our third child. Being pregnant and having a rare disease means Erin is doing her best to avoid getting sick and stressing the importance of hand washing and mask wearing to her boys. But she knows once she sends them off to school, their risk of potential exposure goes up. You know, there's a whole, a much larger group of kids that I'll be exposed to. And we really don't have any idea if other families are taking the same precautions we are, which which does make us a little bit nervous. Based in Minneapolis, Aaron helps provide a space for those dealing with autoimmune hepatitis through the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association based here in Indianapolis. Shared on Facebook, they've been hosting webinars since March, giving vital information to families navigating this pandemic with extra worries. It's been fantastic because there's, um, when you have a rare disease, there's not a lot of information out there about your disease itself. And then when you add the pandemic into the mix, there's next to nothing. The webinars and Facebook page has allowed people from across the country to connect and not feel so alone during these difficult times. I think just the sense of community the Facebook group and page brings is immense. While folks like Erin and her family are doing their part, she wants others to step up to the plate as well and look out for those in their community. Whether you have a rare disease or not, I just think it's important for all of us to do our part to, to stay healthy so we don't get sick and inadvertently infect other people. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. Erin and her husband did struggle with the decision to send their kids back to school in person, but ultimately decided in-person learning is worth it thanks to the precautions their schools are taking. A local organization is stepping up to help families juggle the additional challenges created by e-learning. The Mind Trust is partnering with neighborhood centers across the city to create community learning sites. The program kicked off today at the Edna Martin Christian Center in Martindale, Brightwood on the northeast side of the city. Special facilitators help support and guide students. Now, the program is designed for families who may not be able to stay at home with kids. I feel safe knowing that if I have to go and be away from him, that he's getting what he needs um, without me having to worry about him lagging behind. I think that we've heard a lot about higher income families moving quickly to come up with creative solutions for their kids, and that's fine. But as a city, we have to make sure that we're supporting many of our families who are less privileged. The Mind Trust is investing $200,000 in the program. It's free and currently operating at 11 locations across the city. Facilitators are being hired to work at the sites. For information on how to apply for